good to be saved, isn't it? Yeah. I, want, I want to do something right quick. Everybody knows I was there and now she's calling to preach. And uh, I gave him a lesson yesterday, and, and I, I want uh, I learned him how to tie a tie, and uh, <laughs> took a long time. <laughs> but uh, come here, I want you to just take about two minutes. <laughs> I don't want you to preach. I'm, they want me to preach, and so you just take a couple of minutes and tell them what the Lord's done. So, don't prop up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so back in February, thought I was saved, and I wasn't. Got saved. So, from the time of January up until recently, I struggled with a sin, and up until July, Used it as an excuse to run from what God called me to do. Cause I knew he called me to preach in February. So that's something that you have to do, but you don't always want to. But yeah. uh, So I preached my first message a month ago, I believe, on Sunday night. Found out that Sunday morning. So you know, I had like, I already had it prepared and stuff. So, you know, I've just been studying and all that. And so I go back to Temple, Georgia, uh, this upcoming Sunday to preach, and Amen. I guess I'm preaching here soon, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, that's Tim Dickey. <laughs> you done good, son. <laughs> he's, he's, uh, he's preaching at Doug Yanes' church, he, I preached at Doug and Tim, and I was there carrying me three weeks ago. And uh, Doug, fifth Sunday is next Sunday, and so Isaiah's going down to preach. Amen. And uh, pray for him that the, the Lord will use him. Uh, you know, he, he come talk to me about the Lord, and I, I tried to put doubt in his mind. And I said, man, God ain't called you to preach. Go, go sweep a church or wash a window or do something to make you feel better. And he didn't listen to me. And uh, but I told him, I, I told him this: when you start, if God's called you, you don't quit. Right. And so, I want y'all to pray for him. I want you to turn your Bibles to the Book of Revelation. It's good to have my family here. Uh, two of my kids, one son-in-law, and several grandkids, great grandkids. And uh, I call Mark. It's good to see Mark. He, he got hurt. And, and this is the first time I think I've seen him. And, uh, but it's so good to see him. And uh, Tim and all the grandkids. It's just good to see and I appreciate you. Well, anyway, I called Mark. And he said, yeah, I'll come. I said, don't you go to church on Sunday? Well, I called everybody else, and I said, Mark's coming Sunday. <laughs> if y'all want to come. They said, really, is he coming? I said, yeah, he's coming. And if he hadn't come, they, these wouldn't have come. <laughs> so it's just, I'm, I'm on bill. In Revelation chapters number three, I want to read this one. And I appreciate everybody being here. Uh, I appreciate, I, I, I can't call names because I miss a bunch, but I appreciate you being here. Tonight, I want you to remember tonight, Brother Wayne Morgan will be preaching, and Brother Wayne, this is his first time he's preached since he had surgery, and he'll be preaching next, I mean this Sunday night, he'll be preaching tonight, and uh, maybe him and Heather will be singing, and uh, Sam and them will be singing, and and then he'll be preaching. And I only encourage you to come. In Revelation chapters number three, I'll be real brief this morning. In chapters number three, the Bible said, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that 
have the seven spirits of God, seven stars. I know thy works that thou hast a name that thou livest and are dead. Isn't that something? He said there was a time this church was really on fire for God. But said, uh, it's come to the place that you've come all, that, and this is one of the churches of the church age. It's not, we're not living in this day. We're in the level of sin age day. But uh, he said, uh, what you've done, since you had a name written, that you was really on fire for God. But said, now, look at you. He said, you just died. He said, you have died spiritually. And uh, you have just died. He said in verse 2, Be watchful and strengthen things that which are remain. Now, I want to preach on that. I want to preach on strengthen the things that remain. And uh, you look in your Bible and you say, You done preached it. Well, I looked in Glenda's Bible a while ago and I preached it in 2015. Somewhere, I don't know what I preached, but I preached in this, these verses. Be watchful and strengthen the things that which remain, that thou art ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. He said, that's, all, that's what you got to do. You got to repent. You're dead. And uh, to come back alive, you have to have some business to do with the Lord. And then notice verse five, uh, verse four, or verse five. If therefore thou shall not watch, I will come into you as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour. I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with men white, for they are worthy. It's really amazing what he said. This church here, they some in this church, Sardis, is still living for God. They saw that is real, still real close to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, uh, and uh, beloved, this morning, I, I want to say this. We're living in bad times. We're living when the Lord could come any minute. I, was, I noticed on the news one day this week, they're going to now take all of our paper money away. And we don't have no paper money. And it'll all be silver. And, uh, and it's really, this thing is just really, uh, they put a lady on Supreme Court and they asked her to describe what a woman was and she didn't know what a woman was. And you've seen, a lot of y'all seen that. She didn't know. Now they got our kids in uh, pre-K and kindergarten and they're trying to put in their head that they're not a boy nor a girl. But when they get about 15 or 16, they'll decide if they're a boy or girl. Do you believe this? I mean, you you believe, if you really believe this, you'll get faithful to God. I mean, if you really believe this, God will put a stirring in your heart. Because all of these, the, and the, uh, the Bible said in 2 Timothy 3, this knowing also that in the last day, perilous times shall come. And that perilous, the word perilous, means danger. And we're, we're living, literally living in dangerous times. I mean, it's really sad. I mean, I mean, you don't know when you go to town if somebody's going to shoot you. You don't know really when you come into church, some stranger's not going to come in and shoot a bunch up in the church. And, uh, and uh, this is the place that we're in. But notice something. The Bible said in Revelation uh, chapters number 32, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. He, he sees and he says, I see things that's fixing to die. 
And, and the last two months, in the last two months, I preached in three churches that had less than 10 in them. And, and they used to be large churches. They used to uh, carry the whole community. But I'm telling you, folks, listen, we take, and I said this years ago when I was pastoring here, that we, we take things for granted, that they'll always be this way, but they always won't be this way. I'm telling you, folks, uh, uh, you got to, uh, he's, uh, he's just saying, uh, he said, I want to strengthen the things that remain. The church in Sardis uh, has a reputation, uh, and uh, this reputation, but they, that they was on fire, and all of a sudden they died. They died on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, uh, I want to I talk just for a few minutes on strengthening the things that remain, which remain. And uh, we need to examine our lives if there are some things that needs to be strengthened or some things that need to be gone out of our life. And uh, he said, I want to strengthen. Number one, God wants to strengthen the freshness of God on us. The freshness of God. I mean, hey, hey, we, we come to church sometimes and we act like we're in another world. I mean, you know, I, I want to, hey, I want you to look at me. When I go to the house of God, I want to get something. Amen. I mean, I, I want to get something that will stir me up and get me excited and get me in a place that I want to go for God. I mean, that I don't want to sit at the house and sit in the recliner and lay on the couch. And uh, God didn't call me to do that. And, uh, and God didn't call you to do that. And so he said, uh, uh, let me freshen uh, things that are dying. Psalms 1 and 3. And he shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His, his leaves also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall he prosper. God, God wants us this morning, number one, to fall... Fall in love with God. I want my faith to eat up my laziness that's inside of me. I mean, I, I won't see. Listen, I feel I feel uh, so guilty, so guilty sometimes uh, of things that I need to do, and, and I and I don't do them. The church at Ephesus had lost its first love. That's what it lost. The Bible said it lost his first love. The Bible said if we walk in the light as he's in the light, then we have fellowship one with another. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, folks don't love the church like they used to. I mean, hey, hey, folks, I remember I was a young man, I was a young preacher, and I remember uh, they went down behind the church in the cow pastor, four services, four Sunday morning and Sunday night, and we'd go down there, and, uh, and I watched them men get full of God and go crawling out there, and all you could see was the top of their heads in that broom straw. I mean, they was praying, and I'm telling you, God had got in that. God had got on that bunch, and the love of God got stirred up in their heart. They began to shout the victory. God baptized us with the love of God. Uh, I mean, God stirred us with the love of God. Sometime I come over here, and, then, uh, and I'll... Uh, you know, some, sometimes you speak and sometimes you don't. I'm telling you what, folks, uh, we need to be in love with God. Number two, we need to be in love one with another. Number three, we need to be in love with the church. Uh, I mean, this is a great, This has been the greatest place that I've ever been is Revival Baptist Church. Uh, uh, you know, I need to leave probably, but I ain't. Uh, and so, uh, uh, beloved, uh, I, I taught myself I, that I'm leaving and Glenner comes along and said, no, we're not. And I've always took that nod ever since we've been married. That's what she says. It ain't not. You just do it. Don't you, Tammy? She's sitting back there, hey, man, behind you, Glenner. But we need to, don't let the freshness die. The church of Ephesians had lost its first love. And uh, you know what we need? To, we need to bathe in the Word of God. Amen. This is 
My name is Tommy C. And this is my Bible that I hold in my hand. You know what this is? This is food to eat. This Bible. The Bible says, Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. There's a hunger in my heart. As old as I am, there's still a hunger in my heart. Somebody, somebody's always asking me when am I going to retire, and, and I don't, I, nobody in my family has ever retired. They died. <laughs> and I'm not going to retire to see if I die. Right. <laughs> Babe, believe God. Believe God in great things. Believe, hey, fall, let God put this fresh oil on us. Yeah. You know, it takes oil to make biscuits. It takes oil to make that cement out here. It takes oil to make this pave, this pavement. It, ta it just takes oil to operate everything. And if you're going to be dedicated to God, you need to God, get, get, get God put some oil on you. And stir you up and get you excited. I, can't, I don't want to stir you. I want God to stir you. You know, how long has it been since you got on the phone and called somebody and said, Oh, you've really been a blessing to me. I remember before Homer Wilson died, and before I resigned, most of you know Homer. Homer called me. We had Mark Stroud over in Revival, and uh, Homer and Roy Phillips, uh, Roy that pastors up in Andrews, they come three nights to the Revival. On Sunday morning about 8, my phone rung, and it was Brother Homer, and he said, Brother Tommy, he said, I want to tell you, I appreciate what God is doing at Revival. You know what? That, that encouraged me. Yeah. That lifted me up. And uh, beg God for the fullness of his power. Then, beloved, don't let your fruit buy and die. You know, there's fruits that I want to buy for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to buy a fruit that I love you. I want you to buy a fruit that you love me. I want to buy fruits. Listen, I want to have that joy in my heart. In fact, I want that shouting joy. I told Blunder the other day, I said, if I get to the church and I get full of God and real spiritual, I said, will you run up and jump up on the bench? <laughs> she said, no way. You know, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. Don't, uh, uh, he wants to uh, strengthen our fruit. The Bible said that they was, in Luke, the Bible said he spake also a parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereof, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I've come seeking fruit of this fig tree and, uh, and find none. Cut it down, let it, why? Crumble it to the ground. And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig around it. And uh, if it bears fruit, it's well. If it's not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. I'm telling you, there's a lot of little churches closing. Yeah. I mean, seriously, they're closing the doors. There's a lot of churches that's closing the doors. You know why? Somewhere down the road, somebody quit digging. Somebody quit digging in the vineyard. Somebody just sat down, somebody left, somebody quit digging. You know, what we need to do is acknowledge our barrenness, how bar we are for the Lord. What we're, what we're really doing, uh, for, and we need to divide in a vine and ask God to give us fruit. And then, don't let our faith die in God. It's so easy, it's so easy to look and say, well, I have to do everything. 
Did you know what? If we're saved, everybody in here has got something to do. Everybody in here has got something to do. I remember the first time that we had uh, we had 142 in Sunday school. I remember that. Uh, you know, and I had friend day, and uh, and I pushed it for about three or four weeks before we had it. And I remember coming in. They wasn't but one couple here. I remember coming in, and there's a family sitting about middle ways of the church on my left. From my home and Maysville. These people up here had invited people that I know in Maysville. And the reason I didn't invite, I didn't invite them, I didn't have faith that they'd drive up here. <laughs> uh, but I, re I was reading Jack Howes' book, <coughs> Jack Howes up in Hyman's, Indiana. He drove one way, 125 miles, to pick up kids. Most of them didn't get home till 5 o'clock on Sunday evening. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that? He had thousands. They run over a hundred bucks. Brother Lemon up in Michigan, during the winter, his drivers, they got 50 buses out now. They got 50 now. And what they do, they go to the shop at 3.30 uh, on Sunday morning and sit in there and let them buses run up. And they run them for miles and miles and miles. Listen, isn't that amazing? Don't let our faith die. The Bible said in 1 Timothy 1, 19, holding faith, holding faith of good conscience, which some have put away concerning faith and have made a ship, uh, shipwreck. I'm telling you this morning, don't let our, don't let the, our faith die in the Lord. Then number four, and I'm going to quit, don't let our fellowship die. Listen, one of the most important things in your life is fellowship in your God. You know, I can't do what I used to do because my body won't let me. My mind will do it. My mind is willing and ready, but my body won't let me. It's tired. My body's really tired. It's just almost, my body's almost wore out. It's just almost gone. And I know that. I know I know that I just I hadn't got long that I'm going home. I know that. But I don't want to lose my fellowship with the Lord. I don't have I want to have fellowship with God. I mean fellowship with God. I, I the Bible said how can you walk in the light as he's in the light unless we have fellowship one with another. And I want fellowship with God. And then I want fellowship in my church. You know what? We're all born on the back side of the track. You know what? This morning, I, I don't want my fellowship to die. I made this congregation my priority. I told them men that when they elected me here at Revival Baptist Church, and I, and I can name them all one by one, the pulpit committee, and I told them this. I said, you got to, I got to live, uh, you know, or go to work. Uh, one of them, I got you know, you put me full time or I'll go to work. But I said, there's one thing I got to have. I've got to have this. I got to have fellowship with the church. I said, the church has to love me. And they need to tell me occasionally that they do love me. And tell me sometimes that I've done a good job preaching, whether I did or not. Makes you feel better if I tell you. Huh? Listen, don't lose our fellowship. Make Christians a priority. And then, I want you to look at me, Heather, I want you to come this morning. I want Heather to sing a song. This morning, if your desire, I want you to look at me. If your desire is not where that it once was, you need to come to the altar 
and taught us you. Listen, if you're sitting here this morning, you know what revival church has done in the past. Would you come and say, Lord, would you do it again? The Lord's the only one. They, I mean, you know, this church can go openly big without me. I'm just, I'm dirt, just dust of the earth. I'm nothing, I'm nobody. But I'm glad God loves me. And I want God to do it again. I want God to do it again. You say, uh, he said to ask and you shall receive. It's that simple. Just ask God, would you stand? This morning, just have a saying. You need to come. If you're not where you ought to be with God, I want you to come this morning as they sing. Will you do it? Right now, come. I've not always been faithful, but he has. I've not always been grateful. Why don't you step out and call this morning? He has. I've not always been true, but he's always come through. He has, yes, he has. Listen to this. Tell Don't him you I'm miss not it? strong, he says I am. Do you know somebody you need to pray for? to come would you come not for me but for your sake in Jesus sake would you come sing another verse now. I can't see what lies ahead oh God he 